Hey there, and welcome to Game Points episode 132. This is our weekly little get together. We talk about recent gaming news. Uh, tonight, uh, David and I are joined by Brad Wardell of Stardock. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give a hi there, Brad, and let everyone know that you're in chat. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Uh, if this seems to be a bit of a more spur of the moment kind of thing than we used to do, it's because, well, I didn't know we were doing this until about 20 minutes ago. So. <laughs> So I do want to extend a thanks to Brad Wardell out there for joining us. And for those who might not know, why don't you give a quick sundown of who you are and what your relation is to Stardock? Sure. I'm the uh, president and CEO of Stardock. I founded the company back when I was in college in uh, the early 90s. And uh, we are a software development company and that makes uh, everything from PC software like fences and window blinds and and uh, Object Dock, and of course PC games like Galactic Civilizations, Sense of Sword Empire, Off-Road Trading Company, Actions of Singularity, and as of September 20th, we will be releasing Star Control Origins. And that is actually why we're here tonight. Apparently there are some uh, legal situations going on with the Star Control franchise. Who owns what? What's going on? It seems to be, I mean, you're, you have, you're very confident that you have this sorted out. Uh, the guys who created Star, uh, Star Control, Fred Ford and Paul Reach, I believe is his name, or Reach, Reach, I believe, uh, they are countersuing. There's, there's a lot of lawsuits going on. I am not a lawyer. Neither my host, uh, David, there or myself are lawyers on this. So we, we are just read a lot of the Internet. Just two guys on the outside on looking in here. Uh, why don't you give us what your breakdown of the situation is, Brad? Sure. So there's um, two there's a lawsuit and a counter lawsuit. So uh, Stark's uh, complaint, well, you call them complaints usually internally, but Stark's complaint is that Paul and Fred insist that they have the right to promote their new game as the direct sequel to Star Control. And our complaint is that, no, you that's our trademark. If you're welcome to call it, make your game and call it whatever you want, but you can't call it the sequel to our game. That is... That would create confusion in the marketplace if someone – let me walk you through how that would be. Star Control Origins comes out in September. Now picture they come out with their game in, I don't know, two or three years from now, and they announce it as the true sequel to Star Control. People are going to think that that is the sequel to Star Control. And our position is that, no, that's why we have trademarks is to prevent that kind of confusion. Their counter-argument is essentially – uh, no, we have the, we have the right. We're going to continue to do that. And in fact, they filed a countersuit to try to cancel our trademark. And then they have a miscellaneous copyright infringement for the sale of the DOS games from the you know, from 25 years ago. There was a Star Control started out as a series of DOS games in the early 90s uh, when we assumed the contracts from uh, Atari. They included a uh, contract to sell and distribute the old DOS game, so we we did, and they are they said you can't sell them. They we asked them well, why do you say that? They said well the license is expired, and we asked them well can you explain that? They said no, they're expired. I'm like well you're gonna need to do a little bit better than that, um, and so when we uh, when after we had filed our lawsuit to ask them to demand that they quit referring to their sequel as Star Control, I'm sorry, their game as a sequel to Star Control, they filed that we were violating their copyright. Um, pending outcome of litigation, we went ahead and suspended the old DOS games from being for sale because I mean, the sales of those games were about what you'd probably expect of 25 year old games. I mean, I, I think the total lifetime revenue on Steam was like $8,000. Um, so, and even, in fact, even if it is resolved, we're not sure we'll end up putting it back because there's actually a fairly significant technical support issue in trying to support 25-year-old DOS games on Windows 10, as you can imagine. So right, I've, I've done the even, try, even try if this is resolved, they probably aren't going to go back to, uh, you know, go online again. We'll probably just direct people to get uh, your one Masters, which is a really good uh, open source Re, uh, for, uh, kind of a remake of Star Control 2. So that is essentially the issue that that brings us largely up to where we are. 
Okay, uh, I have a couple questions based on what you were saying here. You mentioned that Starduck acquired the rights to Star Control from Atari. Yeah, the uh, the trademark, the, tra okay, the trademark, trademark to Star Control, and the uh, copyright to Star Control Three. And so that, that's a big issue. Time, Go ahead. What's that? My apologies. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say at the time that that consisted of one hundred percent of the registered IP for Star Control games. Um, our position is that we don't own any of the copyrights that we know of in Star Control 1 and 2, the first two games in the series. So we've been very careful not to use any of that because we don't know who owns what. And that that part is messy, which is why we should try Right, not to because if I recall, and once again, I'm not a historian on this, it was originally published by a claim and then licensed to a claim and then my claim yeah. went under, Atari picked it up, but then Atari got bought out by infograms if i recall uh did you get the license from them before or after atari got purchased by infograms well so it's accolade back back in the day uh they own the trademark and the copyright to star control 3 and the trademark for just star control and i let me, let me pause here real quick it's important to stress that copyright and trademark are two extremely different things on the legal side of things i know like on this show i tend to use them erroneously interchangeably but once you start getting to the realm of law they are two completely different bags oh i see people mix up i they'll say the trademark and the ip and trademarks are a type of ip there's three people there's three main types of trademarks that we hear about you have trademarks, copyrights, and patents. And together, that is known as intellectual property or IP. So uh, back in the day, uh, Accolade contracted Paul Ricci, as, who was an independent contractor. So as an individual, there was no actually no Toys for Bob or anything in this. It was just Paul Ricci to uh, deliver a game to them. And then he turned around and got a bunch of friends to work on the game uh, with him. That includes Fred Ford. So Fred Ford was not part of this agreement. It was just Paul and Accolade. And then they delivered a bunch of, uh, they delivered the game to them and Accolade called it Star Control. They trademarked Star Control. And, um, you know, the, and then for Star Control 3, Paul and Fred weren't apparently not interested in working on Star Control 3. So uh, Accolade went on and made Star Control 3 without them. And then down the line, Accolade got bought by Infogrames. Remember Infogrames? <laughs> and then Infogrames rebranded itself as Atari. And then Atar we acquired Atar the rights from Atari. A lot of these the, uh, the rebranded infograms into Atari. Right, exactly. Okay. Infograms and Atari are the same thing. It's just they infograms acquired the Atari. Right. Brand, Atari used to and exist as one company and then Atari. went bankrupt and then got bought by infograms who then changed themselves to Atari. It's it's that's part of the reason why this is so messy is because multiple companies that were involved with this have since been shuttered. Oh, that that's pretty common. I mean, a lot of these older IPs, I mean, I was thinking about the other day about how many things over the years where some part of it has gotten, went out of, uh, you ever looked at the Star Trek IP? Yeah, uh, well, the, in, in general, any video game made in the 80s, that was the Wild West of copyright and trademark. So that's why people are like, why don't you remake game X? Well, it's because 20 different people might have a claim to the rights holders and none of them know what it is. Oh, yeah. Look at Master of Magic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no one knows who has what rights in Master of Magic. And that's why you've never seen a sequel to it, because nobody knows. Or even more contemporary with Battletech and Robotech between Hairbrain Schemes, uh, Piranha Games, and Harmony Gold. Yeah. Which, that's just it. So it's all nuts. Uh, but so... Uh, Paul Frisch said, hey, there's we, we have claim to this. Did they ever prevent, pre present any legal documentation showing this, or did they just say, we have claim to it, and that was the end of the story? Well, claim to, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by claim to. Okay, fair enough. Uh, once again, I, I'm, I'm, forgive me, I'm, I'm not a lawer, so I, I oh, that's get okay. a little bit lost on this. I, I'm just when they say sure they have 
Fair enough. And you have to be very careful about what you say. So I understand. Uh, when they contacted you, did they provide any legal documentation or did they just say, take our word on it? Well, so it being nebulous. So what happened was, is that uh, we, when we acquired the uh, rights to S star control, we, when we, from Atari, uh, we were in pretty early contact with Paul and Fred and we, we asked them if they wanted to be involved in the new game. They said Activision wouldn't let them. Well, first they, they expressed some interest and they said, well, we'll have to talk to Activision. They came back and said, um, Activision won't let us be involved. And that's because so, Toys for Bob is a subsidiary of Activision, correct? Exactly. Okay. So yeah, in fact, that's one of the ironies, irony, uh, sorry, ironies of this GoFund thing, GoFundMe thing is, is that Paul is the president of an accolades or an Activision studio. They're not exactly uh, uh, small potatoes. It's not this argument that's indies versus the big corporation is, is kind of uh, flipped on its head. But um, with so I, I'm, to... I'm going to push you a little bit on that there sure. uh, because yes, they are part of Toys for Bob. They're the president of Toys for Bob, which is part of Activision. But correct me if well, I'm wrong, but didn't know, you say at the together beginning? Skylanders? Yeah, they do they Skylanders do and the remake of the Spyro game. But didn't you say at the beginning that they started all this independent from Toys for Bob? So is it possible that while part of their business transact, part of their business dealings is with Toys for Bob, this part of the lawsuit is completely only on them and has oh, no absolutely. connection to this Activision is not at all. A toys, toys for Bob is not involved in this in any way. Okay. I'm just, I was just commenting the idea that um, we're talking about some a couple of lonely indies trying to against the big company. I mean, Stardock is an indie by any reasonable standard, right? We're, you know, privately held by well me, and <laughs> you know we're not a big company. It's just a you know a group of us making games because we love them. Um, you know, the, uh, being painted as this corporate publisher is is just anyway. But I not to get off track. So. When we, we acquired the IP from Atari, we contacted them. Uh, Paul and Fred said, "Hey, we got the. Uh, do you think you guys can you know want to work on this?" And they said they can't because you know eventually it came out that Activision wouldn't let them, but that they really hoped to return to Star Control someday. And at that point, we said, "Well, if, if you you know, really want to get back, you know, I'm a huge fan. We would be happy to transfer all the rights we got to you at our cost if if it would help you make a new game because and we just." Be when awesome. you say at cost, do you mean for the amount that you paid Atari for? Exactly, okay. which was which was three hundred grand. Which I know to a to a lay person or a consumer, it sounds like a lot, but that's it's that's basically nothing in terms of IP costs. Um, and what I was going to ask is, when you guys got the IP from Atari in the first place, there was nothing in their documentation that stated that they had leased it or that it was a temporary license or anything like that. They had full ownership of it when you purchased it, as far as you're aware of. Well, of the trademark, there is no question. We have the trademark. Um, in that, fact, if you, look at, registered trademark, if you look at Paul Ricci's trademark. and Fred Ford's GoFundMe at the very end, it does say Star Control is a registered trademark of Stardock Systems Incorporated. It's just weird because that's one of the arguments that I've seen them bring up before is that the license was temporary and the license terminated in 2011 or, or 2001 or, or whenever they stated and that the, the license shouldn't be granted anymore and it should have fallen back to them. But I... I was wondering if they developed any kind of documentation with that, or if something Atari had would. would no, it's. That. I mean, that's it. That it's not. It's. I mean, not. That's. It's nonsense. I mean, they they never had the trademark to Star Control. They never had any rights to Star Control. All the agreements are explicit. Say that the developer understands that they have no rights to the trademark and never will. Um, I mean, that part is pretty black and white. The what they licensed to. Actually, what they represented was that they owned copyrights in the game, which is different. So copyrights are things for like, uh, if I draw a, a unique image, that could be treated as a copyright. Um, if I write a book, obviously that's protected under copyright. Source code, it could be protected under copyright. So certain things, what they, what they were representing is that they were licensing their copyrights that they were creating uh, to Accolade. And after the term of the agreement expires, those copyrights, that uh, return back to them. 
And that can include, like, character names or the various alien races or whatever else they may hold still? No, no, you can't. You cannot copyright a name. Okay. You can't. There are things you can't copyright. You can't copyright, for example, a recipe. You can't copyright there because that's where you get into. There's patents which are for inventions. There are copyrights for work authors things you author works of authorship, and then there are trademarks and those cover th names and symbols. So you can trademark a name. So for example, you could trademark the Ali Lule Lo. Or yep. whatever they were called. And we but have. you can't <laughs> but you can't copyright the Ali Lule Lo. Correct. Okay. Uh I had a question, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> uh this whole thing is clearly very confusing and very messy. One thing that uh well, the, would... not all of it. The trademark part of it, so there's two different Yeah, the cases. trademark part of it does seem to be pretty clear. Is, but then the fact that the GoFundMe says, hey, this is trademark by Stardock. Like they even have a so thing. when they say that we're they're setting up a defense fund, the question is is well, is their defense defense against what? That they can stop that problem could go away instantaneously, like stop infringing on our trademark, right? It, it stop infringing on our trademarks, and that, that that's uh, so that that's that's essentially what Stardock's uh, complaint is: is that you can't announce a game. You can't profit off of someone else's trademark. So would you guys be happy if they basically called their game a spiritual successor, changed all the names, locations, made it so none of it was based on the Star Control universe, but could well, play very similar hindsight, to the original games? Right, so a lot has happened you know, since then. Mm -hmm. But if, for example, if they had come out in October and simply had said, from the creators of Star Control comes uh, Ghosts of the Precursors, and then they told you how great their game was going to be or whatever, that would have been fine, and we wouldn't be talking now. Okay. But that's not what they did. What they actually did is they announced their game as the true sequel to Star Control. They put the Star Control 2 box up on the page, which we actually own. So that was our copyright. It's on the, we own the packaging. And then they refer to it as the true sequel to Star Control, the direct sequel to star control and in some cases actually promoted as star control colon ghosts of the precursors now i saw a bunch of game press sites call it star control colon ghosts of the precursors but i have not been able to find anywhere where they themselves referred to it as that could this be one of those things where it's just the media getting things wrong and them spinning it that way or have paul no, and no, fred this, uh, physically so what, what, what they did, there. what they would do is when someone the in the media would get it wrong, what they in turn would do is retweet it, which is, I mean, I think you'd agree if I'm retweeting your show, for example, I'm promoting your show, right? Um, well, you have to be careful with that because you can always retweet things that you don't agree with. Because no, by, by that logic, it's, it's you can... It's not an endorsement. Retweeting, okay. obviously, is not an endorsement. But if you are... It, so then, the, but the question then is because it ultimately a jury jury will be asked this: Would they consider what they did to be promoting? Right? If you see that they're retweeting uh, articles that are calling it Star Control colon goes to the precursors, and then their commentary is the true sequel to Star Control is coming, would you consider that promotion? You know, promoting it as that name. And that's a question a jury will ask. Be answered. I mean, be asked to answer yes or no. Um, what, and in trademark law, the question is, always comes down to confusion. The like, I don't know. Have you guys ever been on a jury for anything? No, I successfully acted like an angry right wing nut job and got out of jury duty once, and that was the extent you know, of my funny, experience with I, it. <laughs> I tell them I have a gift. I can actually tell if someone's guilty, and I tell them that, that I should be on a jury because I have this power. Of, I can just I don't even need to hear the case. You just got to see him. You'll know right away. I just I just know right. I just sense it through my crystals. Or you something. realize this is one of those things that you're going to be taken out of context for, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I think, see, yeah, exactly. This is why you look. If you look me up on the internet, I'm like I get reported as this monster, and it's classic confirmation bias where someone will take some quip I make and they go, 
oh yeah, Brad Wardell, he's, and then they'll say, you know, whatever terrible thing about me. It's like, uh, I really wish I should have made a joke. Just Brad Wardell thinks he can, he can tell the guilty. He's that much of an arrogant <laughs> SOB. Or whatever. But, uh, but anyways, the way this stuff works is that a juror will be asked, did this create confusion? Did what they do create confusion? Yes or no. Okay. Right. Where, and that, where that people ultimately led to believe that their game was related to star control. And the, you know, that's how these things, the, the jury gets questions and it'll say yes or no. Right. Ultimately it doesn't matter what the, uh, may or may not have been said. What you're saying is what matters is, was there intent to mislead or even maybe not intent, well, that's but actually is a that issue? Okay. The question is the one. So the first question is, uh, were people confused? Were okay. people confused? Did people think that their game was related to star control? Then the second question, the follow up question is, did they do it on purpose? Did they intend for their game to be presented as being related to star control? Is and it- that's up. I mean, I obviously have my opinion, but that will be. Is, is it your stuff. opinion that uh, Paul and Fred are deliberately trying to conflate their Ghost of the Precursors with Star Control Origins? Not Star Control Origins, just Star Control. Just Star Control obviously. in general. Okay. Yeah, I I think that when they promote their, I think that. So if I'm asked, are they intentionally trying to promote their game as the sequel to Star Control? I would say yes because they are claiming it is the sequel to Star Control. Okay. You know, in their own words. Okay. Uh, there is one thing I did want to touch on real quick. I know you said you had to go in about 15 minutes. It's been about 25, so thank you for that. But there is one thing I wanted to touch on. Uh, what kicked off this entire topic for me, what we were going to talk about, was their $2 million GoFundMe lawsuit that their or GoFundMe page to, to counter sue you guys. Uh, and it all stemmed from what I found out about was from a Polygon article. Now, in this article, it says that Stardock suit alleges that Ford and Reach have no claim to Star Control trademark, nor did they contribute meaningfully, meaningfully to the creation of Star Control or Star Control to the Urquan Masters. Uh, it's that last bit I kind of want to focus on. Uh, do, sure. you f- do you feel that these two guys did not contribute meaningfully to Star Control games? No, I, I, I think they are instrumental to them. And that's like, if you can read it, it, it is not say, it doesn't say anything like that. What it says in the actual, now the, for one thing, there's the issue that they really pulled on it's that they got sensationalized is that Paul and Fred refer to themselves as the creators of Star Control, which is a, a title that they only recently started claiming for themselves. But now, when we're talking lay people, you know, for the average, for people just talking, that I don't, I don't care. I mean, who, who's, who's going to begrudge the two most instrumental guys in the development of that game as calling themselves creators? I, I certainly don't. I've referred to them as the creators countless times. The issue comes up is when they try to you promote that in commerce and, and imply that they alone were the creators of it because legally speaking and this is where look, lawyers are not pr people right i mean lawyers there's a reason why people have the opinions of they do of lawyers i mean if i had you know if i had had pr people looking at it i would certainly have made sure that they they wrote it differently but in legal terms creators are normally means authorship they own the copyrights Accolade. Well, no, 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 no. uh, Accolade technically created Star Control. Now, it's sort of like when people correct you on saying, well, technically that's what you're talking. It's not a theory, but a hypothesis, right? Have you ever seen people make that argument? It's like, so it's a kind of thing where it says, I have a theory that da, 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 da. And then when we're, if we're just talking, no one cares. But if you're in a scientific conference or you're in a, a legal situation and you say, well, my theory is such and such that, that someone's going to, you're going to get someone who's going to go, no, no, you see, uh, you're technically, that's a hypothesis, not a theory. You see, because a theory has to, and that's essentially what you have in the legal document where it's like, uh, essentially, you know, the lawyer's being a little pedantic, maybe. And saying, well, well, technically, you're not really the creators because the, uh, uh, you know, accolade 
is the one who created the trademark Star Control, whereas you are technically the cre- maybe the creators of certain intellectual properties. But it, and it's like, you know, your and then your eyes start going in the back of your head. Uh, what you know, I mean, it's and but if you're if you have an axe to grind, if you really want to to take that snippet and go the town, you can say, aha, Starhawk's trying to say that they didn't even work on the game barely. And it's like, oh, come on. I mean, one can just look at the credits on the game and they know that look, Paul Ricci was the lead designer and it's it, and Fred Ford was uh, credited as, as the lead developer. Okay. Right? That, that's, and that's just what, that's what I wanted to clarify to, to find out if that's what you felt or not, because reading stuff, uh, just my quick cursor research online, it sounded like you were saying that they were minimalized in what they were making, which to me would be the equivalent of saying like Ken Levine didn't create Bioshock or Shigeru Miyamoto didn't create Mario or Hideo Kojima didn't create Metal Gear. It felt like you were kind of taking that path on there, which is kind of why I wanted you to state clearly what you well, meant by that's that. The, we, and then when people say, well, start, I say, look, in, a, in the loss, of, if you read the things that they claim about me, that their lawyers have written about Starlock. I mean, that could be cherry picked to death. Um, I think you get into a case where some of the some people in the media are choosing to run with this. Not first of all, they uh, Paul and Fred did something that I've not run into before. Is they literally hired a crisis PR firm to promote their lawsuit, which I've actually never seen anything like that. So they they pour through this to go, aha. Here's something that you know we could uh, kind of twist and make it look like that Starbucks trying to claim that Paul and Fred were just you know were nobodies on the game. It was really made by everyone else. It's like no, no, no. Like the example I give to fans is I'm the lead designer on Star Control Origins. I I consider myself reasonably important to the game's development, but legally speaking, I'm not the creator of it. I don't have I have not created any copyrightable material. And legally speaking, a creator is another is a legal term for author, right? Like if I author a book, I can say I'm the creator of it legally because right. that's that's the euphemism, so to speak. And I'll admit that's where a lot of my confusion is coming in, is that we have terms that we use in our modern vernacular, right? But then yeah, those I mean, don't always mean the what they mean in the legal sense. Exactly. What we use in our in common ta- discussions, and what's when and when you get into a federal court case, are different things. They use very different terminologies for these things, and to try to cherry pick what's in a legal document and say, "Aha! You see, they really mean this in the common you know vernacular of it." Um, that's not really being fair. That's really not. That's I think that's pretty intellectually dishonest. Okay. So, uh, we're approaching 30 minutes here, Brad. Uh, I'm actually I... doing pretty good. I'm still waiting for, I have, I'm doing a build on, on the project right now. And I was supposed to be done 15 minutes, but they did another check in while we were talking. So I have a few, couple more minutes. If you guys have, you know, feel, like I said, feel free to grill me as hard as you want on, <laughs> on this or if any of your viewers fair, wants. Fair want enough. To. Uh, I, I did open up chat two questions, so we'll see if anything comes in. One thing I want to uh, mention real quick is that in the GoFundMe page, because that is what I know that this has been stretching back as far as the galities go. I want to say since October or November of 2017, correct? Yeah. But, well, I mean, nothing got filed until uh, I think December. Okay. Uh so either way, we're kind of six months to seven months into the legal issues, but this entire situation stretches back 25 plus years as to who owns what. But one thing that what, what kicked off this topic was their GoFundMe page that they brought up, which is currently sitting at $10,000 of their 2 million goal with, I, I believe, a month left in three days. I don't know how long their GoFundMe is running for. But in the actual GoFundMe page right here, it says the following paragraph. Shortly after we announced Ghost of the Precursor, Starguck claimed they has always had the rights to our original creative material and began to bundle and sell our game without permission. When we tried to stop these illegal sales, Stardock filed their lawsuit. Is that yeah, the that's... genesis of the lawsuit? No. The genesis of the lawsuit is that we asked them to stop promoting their game as the sequel to Star Control. And their answer 
was like and this is a quote like it or not we are going to move forward with our game as promoted as the sequel the i'm sorry the direct sequel to and i'm paraphrasing but um the direct sequel to star control and we expect resistance can that quote be found anywhere or was this a phone it's call it's not not publicly okay but what i don't know if you can answer this or not is it something that can be brought up in a legal setting if it gets that far it's not relevant okay uh, legally it's not relevant I I, I, I mention it because you know that someone's going to go, oh, yeah, it's fine for you to say there's a quote, but where is it and produce it? So I'm just trying to see if. Well, sure. But that happens. Um, you know, it's there are how we filed a trademark lawsuit. What does that have to do with their what they're claiming we filed? We didn't. There's not what people. People should rather than listening to what. Rather than just going on the, either their site or our site and reading our stuff, which is still useful because you can at least see the you know, each site's point of view, you can just go on the pacer or whatever and read the documents. Okay. And that you know, then you get an idea of what is what. We started filed a trademark lawsuit. It didn't file a lawsuit for um, the things they just claimed. Were, well, the because they crap. Like, what is it they because we. Uh, because they got mad, or because we got mad at them for something. It was, look, you refused, they they reserved the right in the future to promote their game as the direct sequel to Star Control. And that was a big issue. There are the other, but that wasn't the only issue. I don't want to oversimplify it. There were other issues, such as they're making vast claims on our game, demanding private builds. They were demanding uh, we take out features like our ship designer. Our games have ship. Always have a ship designer going. If you said you play Galactic Civilization, so you're familiar with that. Our with our ship yeah, designer. Yeah, David played Galsiv. Yeah, so I mean, our, our games have a ship designer. It's kind of a thing with our games. They demand we pull that out because someone might make a ship that looks like one of their ships. Or, uh, they, in fact, I remember there being a nasty, well, not nasty, but a brief exchange between you and J. Michael Chizinski at Babylon 5 over creating a Star Fury in Galaxy of 3, I think, and he did not care for much for that at all. Yeah, some guy, yeah, fan had made a Star Fury. Well, actually, he was okay with it. the point of a creative por portion of any video game is so you can try and make other parts of your other favorite games or franchises <laughs> it sounded like deal? he thought maybe you guys were selling that as one thing but when he realized it was a fan thing but but the, the yeah, point is exactly. this is something Once you guys have had for a while this was just a fan thing that someone made with our our tool set he was okay with it he, okay. I, i've known okay. i've actually known gms since the usenet days i mean i don't know him personally but i mean i've interacted with him since the old days yeah he's, he's been around he's since actually, before the internet was the internet exactly he's a, he's a really great guy um but yeah, but so they had all these claims that they're like, well, we think we have rights to your game because you have these, it would be these vague things that you can't copyright. You can't copyright ideas. You can't copyright themes or, um, you know, like Star Control, Star Control is a game about space exploration and, and adventure. You can't copyright that. Um, you can't protect that. I mean, otherwise, Angry Birds would be in very big trouble. <laughs> and and so we, but I, so at the same time as they're uh, making these claims, they file a DMC takedowns of Star Control One, Two, and Three. Now, Star now this Control was 1... to have the sale of the games on Steam and GOG and other marketplaces removed. They filed the claim first. Yeah, they filed the DMCA takedowns first. Their lawyers sent you know, the usual scary letters to GOG and Steam and told them you have to take the games down. They did. And I think uh, uh, one of your, you know, someone listening to this could make the, who's familiar with all this could say, could make the case, well, you know, Star Control 1 and 2, they made those games. Or, you know, quote unquote, they're the quote unquote creators of them or what have you. Okay, but they didn't have any involvement in Star Control 3. And then the argument that their fans will say is, aha, but they had copyrighted, they had licensed copyrighted material into Star Control 3. Therefore, they had the right to pull it down. Well, I, I would, I think there's some argument of what copyrighted material there is down, but let's go, let's, for the sake of argument, give them that. And the problem with that is like, but they're also saying that Star Control Origins 
has their various copyrighted material because it has a ship designer and they didn't like the way the the cruiser of the earth the earth ship's cruiser looks and they don't like you know the this all the stuff that isn't protectable under copyright it's just their vast expansion of what they think copyright is well now we have this issue where they're they're claiming to be the sequel to star control and they've shown a willingness to file DMCA takedowns on a pretty flimsy thing, you know, f flimsy arguments. What happens if when Star Control Origins comes out, they try to file DMCA requests against that using the same argument? That have it have they was... moved to take any legal action against Star Control Origins, Origins yet? No, they have not. Okay, so this and, has and been this solely point, focused on be... 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, so if the... Because a lot of people ask, well, what happens if each side wins? Well... If they win their suit, we would not be able to sell the old DOS games. That's that's their best case scenario. They're trying to cancel the Star Control trademark too, but that's I mean, like I said, you can go on to that trademark has been in effect. You said that you're so confident in that you're willing to talk about owning that trademark in a an ongoing legal case on a rank amateur podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that is a you know that is a that is never going to happen. Um, if we win our trademark suit, then they have they can't obviously use our our trademarks in the future, and they would have to pay damages for um, you know for any damages in terms of lost sales due to confusion, which you know would be up to us and to prove in court. You have to and determine that, what is owed, what might have been costed in loss of cells etc exactly and then I, but i think you can make the argument that the, the, the confusion is such that they've done especially i mean you've you heard this has all been covered on polygon and all this other stuff who owns star control all this confusion they've brought in probably shaved off you know a few percent of our sales and not to mention all the ill will it's created and all that good stuff now so, are when when you're sure. saying damages uh are you considering like the sales of Star Trek one, two, and three part of that, or are you referring specifically to the damage done to the upcoming Starcraft, uh, Starcraft, Star Control Origins? <laughs> We're talking about the damage to Star Control Origins. Is that okay? Because early you said the sales cursors. on Steam for their lifetime is maybe eight grand. Right. I mean, there would be no point. It would cost more to file the motion to get damages for that than the damage, you know, than it would be worth. Okay. I do have a question from chat, it looks like, from a DDS translation. He says the following, or they say or she says the following. I was wondering, what would the process of applying for a Star Control license have involved, and why would Paul and Fred not simply have just done that? That is a great question. So in, in 2013, after we got it, we offered to transfer to him for our cost, which was $300,000. They could have had it right then. That's how much um, you paid... Atari re since Rebra the right. new Atari for the entire thing for for what right. you have yeah and and back in October you know back when all this started you know and unfortunately we're I'm very limited in what I can discuss in terms of if it I have to stay way away from anything that talks about settlements because there's a uh, court order that prevents discussions on settlement discussion okay so um, so if I were but, to ask what would be a fair settlement for you you couldn't even comment on it I, I know, and I, the worst part is I'd love to talk about that, but um, you know, we're not even allowed to talk about it because what, one of the things they did, the thing that got them the most traction, and this is something that is pretty aggravating, is that so in these cases, the court requires parties to, to hand over, to turn up, send back and forth um, settlement uh, proposals. And so the, the lawyers, and I, I, the lawyers go back and forth and they send something over. I mean, it's not like, these early drafts don't even really get, they get, you know, we get a couple bullet points and, and operations legal group looks, it goes, oh, okay, this is a first draft, send it over. And they send it back. And rather than negotiating anything, they literally just took it, put it on the web and say, look, Stardock's trying to do these terrible things to us. It's like, well, no, that's not what happened. That's, you know, and, and then because they did that, the, the, uh, the judge that's involved in this, who's you know, rightly, uh, pretty upset and said, you guys are not to discuss settlement terms any further publicly. You guys can't discuss your settlement negotiations and past, present, or future. And so now we can't even discuss, like, 
oh, well, we're trying to, you know, to offer X, Y, and Z, but they don't want to do this because um, that would uh, that would violate the court order. Okay. So, so for the most part, the judge just came down and said, you can't even hint at what, what might be going on at that point because of what you're saying Paul and Fred did. Right, exactly. Okay. So, like, I can... I can say, for example, before it's all started, that you know we would have been, we didn't, you know, I can say, let me, let me give you an example. Let, let me, let me ask this: Can you Go say ahead. what you would have been happy with before it got to oh, this point? When at the beginning, I assumed that they would just, we would just give them a royalty license, royalty free license. I mean, are you kidding? It would have been great. Two star control games. That would have been awesome. Everyone would have loved it. And when the game, when Ghost was first announced, I helped promote it. It's like, yes, another game in the Star Control universe. Yeah, I, I do remember when all this started coming up, and this is just from my own personal memory, so take it for what you will. Everything seemed to be pretty copacetic between all parties. Yeah, I mean, publicly, I mean, privately, we're saying like, you know, you can't do this, but we well, let's we need to work let's work something out. I mean, I thought for sure it would just you just paper this over. It's not really that big of a deal at the beginning. It's just when they started uh, saying, "Well, no, we have a right. We're going to totally go and keep doing this, and we're going to." And they start attacking us in the press. I mean, I think that your viewers or and and listeners can can go to that look page and and judge for themselves. Like, is this a page that is going to make it easier for the two parties to talk to each other? And try to work something out, or is this something incredibly inflammatory that makes it that much harder for the parties to talk to each other? And I will be linking links to not only uh, Paul and Fred's GoFund page, but also the Stardock forums, which gives a breakdown of the entire timeline, as well as a Wikipedia done by fans of Ghost of the Precursors, keeping track of everything. As many sources I could throw out, so you guys watching or listening to home can take a look at this and come to your own conclusions on it. Well, another thing I want to talk about. So, your guys' game was announced well, a full year before theirs, I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah. And all of that was a few years ago, and this all just kind of kind of started happening fairly recently. I mean, at least publicly. Well, yeah. One of the exact we've been working on this game since for f over four years, and we announced it. Uh, we did the formal announcement in 2016. And throughout the entire time, they had had access to our marketing schedule because we thought we were just, you know, we're just huge fans. And you were so you were for them in the project in the first place, right? Like, right, and 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 in just out of respect, we wanted the, them to be aware of, you know, here's what we're doing. Feel free to let us know what you think, and it was all very amicable. Now, did they and reach that, out with any anything to say no, we're not interested, or did, was was this all just ignored? Um, no, they uh, well, no, um, so. After they told us that the um, uh, they couldn't work on it, they said, "Well, we don't want to license any IP." And and a few times I did re I responded to them over time. It says, "You know, it would be super cool if we could license the space spaceships from Star Control 2 for the the combat section of the game." So we couldn't use we weren't interested in using the any of the species in Star Control 2 because our story had we'd already written our story. We didn't really have a place for them but you're not using the old be... plot or characters or, or exactly exactly well, we let, already can i our own universe. let me Go pause ahead. real quick in star control origins are there no characters or races that were found in star control one or two well forget no, three because that's kind are. of its own thing now there right, are so now and right so at when they they so that's a, and that's one of the things that also enraged fans but they this is again gets into the the depth murky world of of trademarks and ip rights so once they started to try to cancel our trademarks in star control the lawyers said we really you've got to you really need to lock down your ip at this point because it's like we don't have trademarks we don't have registered trademarks in galactic civilizations aliens for example but obviously if someone tried to cancel our galactic civilizations trademark we would start trademarking everything in galactic civilizations in a heartbeat does this fall into that category of uh, and once again not a lawyer but i believe that when it comes to trademark and copyright and all that good stuff you have to show that you've defended it in the past is that part of this on the trademark side uh, you do, and you have to show that you're using it. So use it or lose it. You can't simply uh, trademark something 
proclaim it something to be a trademark and then not either a not defend it or b not use it because you otherwise you're just kind of you can't hog basically you can't just hog words <laughs> and symbols so once they try to cancel our trademarks the lawyers come and say you gotta lock these things down and you're gonna have to make sure that they and you can't just trademark these alien uh you know the alien names like the airy lou you have to use them you can't just say we have a trademark on it and then not use them so we had to so in star control origins we're finding ways to have some you know, minor cameo for you know for different aliens but they're they're like it's we're like i said earlier our our game takes place in a different universe it has a different history but now it's that history is it's you still have the star control aliens in the star control games how those manifest will be different than they were in uh your Quan masters uh you know in star control 2 because um you know it's it's a different universe it has a different background okay i have, I have a couple questions uh just to kind of sure. see if i can't clarify things up one were you planning on using any of these already established names until the lawsuit started firing no, no. Okay, so this was the the, the 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 established names were added as a way to help legally protect your claims to the the trade the trademark. I, I forget the term. Well, I that's a, that's probably a little bit oversimplified. So ever since we we started on Star Control Origins, our the fans had been we've gotten a, you know especially the hardcore ones were pretty unhappy that we weren't going to have uh, the aliens from Star you know the Star Control aliens in the new Star Control game because the argument was pretty straightforward. How can a star control game not have the star control aliens? Or the, like, like the like ors or the androsynth or anything. Like, What's that? like, a new like the ors or the androsynth, sorry. There we go. Yeah, exactly. It's like Star Trek not having Klingons. How can And and so at the, for years, our, we maintained a position of, look, our goal is that if, if we're leaving the door open for Paul and Fred to someday return to the franchise. So that okay. we don't want to touch on those aliens. But Is that uh, a possibility I, still? What's that? That that they could return to the franchise. Like if all this gets put aside and a couple years pass and time heals all wounds, all the cliches, would you be willing to welcome their input onto the franchise? I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't have a, a strong opinion on that right now. I, I have a well. I mean, right now they're they're comparing me with uh, an evil space corporation, and and yeah, I, I think the term not... they use in their in their GoFundMe was oh, the Crimson Corporation. Yeah, and and they Google bomb my search results for my name, which was is kind of tacky. Okay. Um, but so, but who knows in the future? I mean, I, I for us, this isn't like a matter of principle. We have, we, you know, it. There's a human aspect to this. We we have spent four years of our lives to bring back Star Control. The game is really, really good. It's it's it captures that spirit of Star Control too. We've we've spent millions and millions of dollars on this game. And then right at the eleventh hour, you know, these guys come out who worked on the game twenty five years ago, and they and they you know they you know, they, I mean they're my heroes, but, but they come out and they go, oh well, we're making the real sequel, so, you know, the true and direct sequel to Star Control. Oh, and, and it's like, well, why would you do that? Why why right now? Why not wait? A year, you know, until we've had our day in the sun, so to speak. If you want to do something and work something out with us, it, it, is it just, just the timing and made the sequel to your new game? <laughs> yeah, well, well, it's just so confusing. The sequel, yeah, it's just so confusing. Is it mainly just the timing that that seems to 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 be the crux here? Because if I recall, they made this announcement roughly around the time you guys went to early access of Star Control Lords. Five days before they knew that they knew when we were putting our, our what our announcement if they would have if they would have made this announcement six months prior or six months after what would do you think it would have gotten this far i don't know it all depends i mean not in a million years would i have thought that they would come out and actually claim to be making the true sequel to star control and then put the star control 2 box i was just like floored and like okay this is bad but i'm sure we can paper this over we can just work this out because at the end of the day, the fans will generally be pretty happy that there's two star control games coming out. And that, that was but then it's like, Oh no, we want nothing to do with you. And we're the real star control. We're just not, but it's okay. Cause we're not going to use the word star and control as the title of our game. It's like, well, that's not how trademarks work. It's right. about confusion. So why it, 
do you, I'm trying to think of a way to phrase this without saying like a total <laughs> ass. Uh. Well, I'm, I, I'm going to go a different way. I think that this is interesting to me because a couple of years ago we had the Bethesda lawsuit against Mojang when they were making scrolls saying that that was too similar to the Elder Scrolls. And they won that because, again, that was like a trademark style lawsuit. And this is way more black and white seeming that they use the actual yeah, name. Yeah, I mean, I always just thought using that a they similar had the sounding name. stretch. Yeah, and yeah, I always thought that there that was a bit of a stretch, but I mean in this case it's and like, they pulled it off, <laughs> right? And right. yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, the question I've tried to get ask people is like, if my trademark cannot prevent my competitor from using it, cannot cannot prevent my competitor from claiming to be the sequel to my trademark. Why have trademarks at all? I mean, why can't I? Why not? I just go and say I'm making the sequel to StarCraft, but don't worry, I'm not going to call it StarCraft, so it's okay. It's like, no, of course not. You can't do that because it's gonna. It would create immense confusion. It would be like George Lucas saying, "Well, I know I so, don't have the rights to Star Wars anymore, but I'm, I'm going to make the true sequel to Return of the Jedi." And it's going to be out little tiny midi chlorians and stuff. Maybe and maybe Lucas is the one behind the remake, the Last Jedi thing going around. Uh, don't get me started. <laughs> uh, but but I'm just saying, can you imagine that? I mean, like, of course, he, you know, Disney would be all over him in a second if he tried that. And it's like, and it's not like we like instantly came down on them with a hammer or something. We're like, hey, please stop. So I what the, the second question I have because actually your response to what David said there it more or less answered what I was going to say I was just going to be a little bit more crass about it. <laughs> These be crass. Uh, well, I was going to ask you don't doesn't all this seem petty? But you kind of answered why it's a little bit beyond petty there. My next question though is you said that all this is in a separate universe and a separate setting from the Urquan Masters and it's it's kind of a reboot of the franchise. But why is it called Origins in that case? Because Origins, to me, and this is just a personal thing, makes it sound like you're trying to fill in the gaps to the main universe. It doesn't sound like it's very apart. If anything, it sounds like it's going to be directly tied into what Paul and Fred did already. Sure. Well, the, the intent with Origins is that the Origins are actually these precursor structures in Star Control to allow you to visit other universes. So one of our – one of the – parts of our of the business plan for star control origins or you know for the franchise because this is an issue all rpg game you uh, you guys play a lot of rpg games uh way more than i should well <laughs> so you know one of the problems with the rpg games and why we're not getting as many is because they come out and then they're done right and it's really hard that's why like I, one of my favorite games is bioshock and bioshock infinite but it's really hard for, to justify making games where it's like it, there's it, it, they just end so one of the thing thing things we spent a lot of time and energy on was creating this thing called adventure studio, which allows people to easily create their own star control universes. So there's a ship designer, there's a planet editor, there's a building editor. And these aren't like techie tools. These are things that consumers can use. And then they can use the universe maker where they set up the, you know, their own galaxy and map and all that, and put it together with their own writing tools and stuff and then share it. So the idea is that you go to and the, to an origin, which are these this multi-dimensional um, transport that lets you visit these other universes. Right? You know that's the argument. Like, oh, look, I'm visiting this such and such universe. And so one of our goals long term is that uh, is that, you know you finish the main game and then you go, oh, look, uh, Stardock licensed, say, the Farscape universe or the Battlestar Galactica universe, and then you're going through one of these origins with your ship and you're suddenly in the Firefly universe. Don't don't uh, tease me that way. Right, but I, I mean, you can, so, and that's kind of the business plan be, uh, for how do you keep Star Control games, you know, ha having new adventures where you don't end up with the Mass Effect Andromeda situation where oh, God, we've solved our main thing. I guess we just go to, to a totally different galaxy. It's like, eh, it would have been, that's that's not, how about a different idea where I can go to parallel universes, so to speak? Okay, so there's a contextual reason behind the name Origins rather than a spiritual one, I guess. Right. Okay. Also, your game can live forever this way. 
Yeah, and and like uh, there was a game called Neverwinter Nights, and I, I remember my friends and I were very much into creating. I remember our own it. Stories I played it. That for that. So you can create your own modules and everything for it. Yeah, and nowadays though, with digital distribution and and uh, things like Steam Workshop and Nexus mods and you know the mod DB and all that, it is you can really make it easy for people to just keep a a adding to these universes. It's really cool. Okay. Uh, I think that wraps up what I was going to say. We're approaching an hour at this point, which is how long the show goes normally. David, is there anything else you wanted to get in or chat, by the way, if you're sitting in there? If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them. David, do you have anything you want to add? I mean, this is a completely aside, but you mentioned uh, RPGs and some of the stuff you're into. Have you played Divinity Original Sin 2 yet? <laughs> I Actually, I, I have I've watched a lot of Let's Plays of it, but I have not... I uh, had a chance. I've been putting in the burning the midnight oil on Star Control for so long that I haven't had a chance to uh, play it. But man, it looks good. Yeah, I'm the, just the reason that that came to my head is because they that game has a built-in game master mode where you can you know make your own dungeons and you know build your own narrative and kind of like a similar thing where you can build more of your own game out of the game engine itself. Yeah, uh, that's a, I, I love. I mean, yeah, that's fantastic. And I imagine a lot of fans of gone and done cool stuff because i mean like in star control star control is really about the writing it's about the story and being able to tell stories in a sci-fi setting and so that's one of the things we've we've spent a lot of time on i mean ironically the adventure studio application is is one of the more probably the most expensive application our software group has ever made because it was it's it's pretty sophisticated but it's also user friendly all right uh Man, this went on way longer than I thought it was oh, going sorry, to. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> no, no, by all means. You told me 15 <laughs> minutes. I got an hour out of you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, once again, thanks for joining us, Brad Wardell of Stardock. Uh, do you have anything you want to promote before we head out here? I think we're going to end the show hey, when, on this. When's your, when's your game come out? When can, when can we play it? Uh, September do we have to 20th. wait for all this? We don't have to wait for the lawsuit or anything? It's just coming out? No, 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 no. Yeah, it's September twentieth. Okay, no is that lawsuit. when it leaves early access? Uh, it's not in early access. It's I could have sworn it was in early access. I swear to God, no, it was no, in early we access. have uh, just you can pre-order it. And you can get access to the uh, Fleet Battles beta. That's what it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, so once again, thanks. Uh, if you're watching, if you're wondering why I didn't have anything popping up, this was very last minute. I want to thank Brad Waddell again for showing up. Literally at the last minute on a fluke of an invite, and uh, thanks for joining us. Like I said, I will be putting all the descriptions to links, uh, forums, and wikis so you guys can read the lawsuit more in depth if you so choose. It is exceedingly complex in 25 years of who owns what and defunct companies and rights transferring from A to B, and there's more than just one topic that's at stake here, I think, when it comes down to the overall lawsuit. Uh, Brad, once again, thanks for showing up at the last minute. For those of well, you, I got one watching, last. I got one last question. For he's me. got one last question. All right. This this one's always fun for me, because um, you've worked on a lot of games. You've been doing this a while, and people ask developers, you know, what's your favorite game? But I like to ask, what's your proudest work that you've put together or that you've been a part of? Oh gosh, let's see. I would say, I I know this is going to sound goofy, but the the first political machine. Uh, game was really really enjoyable to uh, work on this is the one from back in 2004 i actually forgot you guys worked on that because it's so outside your normal wheelhouse yeah it was really because it's actually like an election simulator with a game on top of it and that was just it was such an off the wall game to make and it was really neat you know the team really came together and put this together and it was awesome all, all right, right. Well, that has been Game Points episode 132. Uh, thank you for joining us. We do stream live here at Twitch TV slash Game Points every Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you can't watch us live, feel free to check out our YouTube page. Just type in Game Points one word. We should pop right up. You can follow myself, Steve Brad, at CapitalistPig21, David Smith over there at Palshife underscore Satori, or Brad Waddell at Dragonall. Could you spell that for us? Oh, uh, wait, uh, for what? Your, Brad your, Twiddle, and, your Twiddle handle. Oh, yeah, it's Dragonal. D-R-A-G-I-N-O-L. Okay. Yeah, I'm going, I go really fast, so I'm sorry if I... <laughs> oh, that's all right. Start up. He's been practicing Anyways, with, uh, thank you for watching. Hands. We will see you next Monday, and until then, we're out of here.
All right. Talk to you later. Thanks, Brad. Mm-hmm.